Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Big Shot Pro video. Today I'm going to talk about how to take a video and give it a painterly look. Um, but that's the example that I'm going to use. What I'm really going to show is how you can batch process using pick to paint, uh, pick to painting in Paint Shop Pro. Now to really do the video part of this um, whole process, uh, it relies heavily on another video I did, which was uh, video editing in Paint Shop Pro. So I'm not going to cover the same things I covered in there. Just uh, recognize that whenever I get a set of images, or you see I suddenly magically have a video after doing processing on images, it's because of steps that are done in that video. The batch processing in Paint Shop Pro is a great tool that can be used for um, performing the same kind of processing on a large number of images. And so it makes sense that if you want to apply pick to painting to a video, you would use batch processing on all the images that make up that video. The only problem is, is when you run Paint Shop Pro's batch processing on a pick to paint script, no matter what, even if you have it in silent mode, the dialog box is going to come up. So we need some way to get around that and keep the process moving. And the way that I'm going to show that we can do that is by using a macro recorder. And by macro recorder, what I'm essentially saying is a software that records where your mouse moves and when it clicks so that you can replay it back and even replay it back in a loop. So you can probably see where this is going. So the macro recorder I'm going to use is Pullover's Macro Creator 5.0.5. Um, how I found this was I was actually looking for Auto Hotkey, but then I learned that Auto Hotkey doesn't actually do macro recording anymore, but somebody on a forum mentioned this one. So this is the one I'm using. I'm sure there's other macro recorders out there and you can use which one you prefer. Um, but that's the version that I'm using. I'm going to show how to use in this example. So with it up, you can click the big red dot on that top menu, and then what it's going to do is provide you a toolbar, in essence. And the blue button on the right will allow you to bring up that same view that you had before, because we'll need it later. But the main functions in this toolbar that we'll need is um, starting to record a macro, and stopping the recording, but then also playing back. If you do mess up, the red X is what you can use to um, delete a recording you made and start over. So before we do any batch processing or macro recording or anything like that, um, you first need to decide what pick to painting a look you want to go for. And for this example video that I have, um, I wanted to create sort of like a starry night kind of look. So I chose the shades of blue um, uh, style. So once you've kind of experimented and decided that, what we need to do is create a script that just launches pick to paint. It doesn't it doesn't actually matter which style you need for the script because that's going to have to be decided by the macro. But before you do any of this, you just want to kind of have an idea of what you're going to go do. So the first step after you've already figured out what style you want to go do is have a test image that you have in here start a script recording. This is in Paint Shop Pro, not the macro recorder. And then bring up Pick to Paint. And you can pick a style, but it won't matter, because again, um, that uh, Paint Shop Pro doesn't automate that for some reason yet. So once the Pick to Painting dialog box closes, then you can stop the recording of your script. And then you can give it a name. And then we'll come back to that in just a second. You can close your example images now. So now that we have our generic pick to paint script, we want to actually do a batch process on this script. So we'll open up the file batch process window. We'll select just two images for what we're trying to do, because we only need uh, two images to set up our macro, which is what we're about to do. So we'll find our basic and generic pick to paint script that we created and all it does is launch the dialogue and then make sure all of your output settings are right so that your images end up where you want them to be and then click start and then what we'll see is the first image attempts to be processed and the dialogue box comes up 
So now, to get past this event, what we want to do is hit record on our macro recorder, then go back to the pick to paint window, select the style that we want, so in my case, this is the shades of blue, and then click send and close. I don't need a preview because I've already tested it and I know what it's going to look like. So once it finishes, it immediately sets up the next image, dialog box comes up again, and now our script is done. So we can stop recording in the macro recorder. So now we have our macro, which has all of our mouse movements and pauses and window activations and all that, but it's not, it's not ready just yet. So we need to bring up the macro creator into our view. And you'll see all the commands that it recorded, and we can do some tweaking to it. So the very first line should be something like a win activate. And what we need to do is change what is the program that that win activate is referencing. So by right clicking on that line and clicking on edit, then what we can do is change the um, activation window. So you can see it says something about AHK, Chrome widget, something or other. That's not what we need. So if you go to the button on the right, which has the ellipse on it, then it'll bring up sort of a, uh, it'll put you in a mode where your mouse will kind of tell you things about which window it's on. And what we need to do is move our mouse to the pick to paint window. And then you'll see that it changes the name of that field to pick to painting. That's when we know we've done it right. And so what that'll do is when the activate window occurs, it'll put your mouse cursor in the right place at its starting point. Without that change, there's no telling where your mouse is going to end up when you replay this macro. So the next thing we want to do is add the capability to um, loop this set of sequences because we're going we want to run through all these steps for every image that we pick to paint. So we click on this green circle with the arrow on it, and that's the loop button and just right now it doesn't matter but you can put how many times you want it to repeat in this field uh, for the video i'm doing i have 566 frames for my video so i'm just putting that number in there now when it adds it to your command list what you'll notice is the loop start and loop end are wrapped around the one line and that's not what we want we need it to loop around the entire thing so we're going to take the loop end command and we're going to cut that. And then we're gonna to scroll to the bottom of our commands as far as we can go, right click and do paste. But again, it didn't quite make it where we wanted it to be, so we gotta take that last command, right click and say move down, and now all of the commands fit within the loop. So at this stage, we've made all the tweaks that we need to, and then we can save it by clicking on the floppy disk icon give it a name, and now we can return back to PaintShop Pro. And it's not a bad idea, like in this case, to test run your script and see if it still is all aligned even after you moved away from PaintShop Pro. So now my second image is done, my second test image, and now we can start the no kidding full batch script execution. And after this test has executed, you should be able to see in your output folder that multiple, at least two pick to paint images were created with the style you were looking for. So again, following the same batch process, but now selecting all images using the generic pick to paint script, verifying output settings and kicking it off. And now we have our script that we can just click play. And then what we'll see, or what we should see, is the mouse will start running through that same sequence of commands, pick the style we want, and then just hit send and close. Then that image will complete, go to the next one, and the script should automatically kick in at the right time once again. Now one thing you'll notice while this is running through just a few example frames is that this the speed of the script is running at the speed at which you moved so if you took a really long time to get to the style you wanted or you had a lot of long pauses in between all of those are going to be present in your script now if you want to you know speed that up you can always re-record the script or create a new uh, macro um, but 
I, I think having some delays is a good idea just because some processing of images can take longer than others and the last thing you want is to get this thing out of sync on like your 30th image or something um, and then it messes up the rest of that that path but if you give it a little bit of margin and let's say you kick it off and you can go do something else. You can get some coffee. You can spend time with your family. Or in my case, you can just sleep because you run it overnight. Um, you don't really have to worry about it getting messed up in between. But speaking of that topic, um, I do want to uh, issue a word of caution that since this is a macro that is running and that you could leave it unattended, uh, if for whatever reason something messes up its process, like a pop-up window or a antivirus software thing does something, or anything that could throw off where the mouse is going to be or where its focus is going to be, I, we don't know what it's going to do. The behavior is unknown. Um, I did have one situation where I was doing a test uh, with a much more complicated macro and it kind of lost its way, and it was clicking all over the place and doing all kinds of stuff. And I had to, um, in for this software, if you find yourself in that situation or you need to just stop the script, uh, the F8 key is what will is what will kill the script or pause it. But um, all that to just say, um, you know, just just be aware that that if it does get off track, um, it can do things that you may not expect it to. This script is fairly benign, so I don't think it's going to be that much of a risk since really all it does is kind of move the mouse down a little bit, click on something, and then uh, click another thing. But it all depends on how your computer is set up and what kind of uh, actions you have. So that's it. Um, it's really just the combination of using a batch process on a generic paint pick to painting script um, and overcoming the pauses with a macro recorder playback um, with some tweaking on the macro. Um, I'm going to just finish up with uh, showing you some examples of some videos that I converted using pick to painting, which means I just took several frames and processed them this way. Um, and like I said, since since the movement is based off of your movements and the time it takes is the same it would take you if you did it by hand, um, it a lot of these videos I had to run overnight and it took hours for all of the processing to finish. So it isn't like batch processing where not only is it autonomous and you don't have to do anything, but it's faster. Since the macro is involved, it's kind of like normal time. It's it, so, but. Here's the Starry Night video, and um, I'll show you a few other videos as I'm closing up. But I, I hope you uh, learned something from this. I hope you can create some really cool videos, or even if you're not doing videos, but you want to do pick to paint on a large batch of images, this process will work. Um, and to clarify too, this th essentially this method of overcoming batch processing shortcomings can be used on any effect. It doesn't have to be paint shop or um, pick to painting. And as always, if you have any questions or would like to recommend content, feel free to leave a comment. If you like the material and you want to be notified of when new stuff comes, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.